Um, hi everybody, my name is Taylor Ingle. Uh, I work at the Hawaii Coral Restoration Nursery. I'm a coral and coral and algae restoration specialist. And today I'll be talking about crustose coral and algae, um, why you might want to grow it at your facility, how we're growing it, and what uh, some future plans are for the Hawaii Coral Restoration Nursery regarding crustose coral and algae. So very briefly, I'm going to assume most everybody knows what crustose coral and algae is, but um, it is a red algae uh, characterized by calcium carbonate reinforced cell walls. Um, it is a major or in many places dominant constituent of reefs, particularly in the reef crest area, which is dominated uh, or which is, uh, experiences extremely high wave energy. Um, and it's also ex uh, highly reproductively active. So a colony of CCA that's the size of a microscope slide has the potential to release thousands of spores at one given time. So extremely uh, quick to grow. Um, so why might you be interested in growing crustose coral and algae? Well, we know that it reduces fleshy algae cover and aquatic invasive species. Um, it induces coral larvae sediment. So as you can see in the upper right hand corner, uh, there's a single polyp right next to some crustose coral and algae. Um, we've all heard that it's the glue of the reef. So it, it uh, consolidates unconsolidated rubble and helps to stabilize the structure of the reef. Um, and like I said before, the reef crest is tends to be dominated by crustose coral and algae because it can handle those extremely high wave energy. Um, and for this reason, it's very uh, useful for protecting structures. And part of the project which we're going to be uh, exploring is developing a way that we can actually apply crustose coral and algae to existing structures underwater in addition to outplanting large colonies of crustose coral and algae. So how are we growing crustose coral and algae? Very simply, um, in the lower right hand corner you can see we're using one single tank. Um, we started with a very small collection of crustose coral and algae and in a short period of time using these louvered window panes uh, vertically which increases the surface area of the tank um, we were able to completely cover the inside of this tank using the power heads to kind of help distribute those spores um, you can actually see there's a there's a magnified view of crustose coral and algae in the center and if I magnify it even more um, that that slightly lightened color uh, structure in the center is called a conceptacle that's where the spores are produced and all those small red dots um, that you see around it are actual uh, crustose coral and algae spores um, so they're extremely small each conceptacle can release 10 to 20 spores and all those little white dots that you see around it are actual conceptacles that I, I popped open with a little paper clip just a few weeks ago. So um, they're a very dense uh, reproduct, uh, reproductive structure um, uh, spacing. Um, so what are we doing with all this crustose coral and algae that we are growing? Um, so if uh, you guys have attended uh, Rob Tunin's uh, plenary talk or Dave Golko's uh, concurrence uh, talk, um, you might know that we are looking to protect a section of roadway. Um, and it's very important that we protect this section of roadway on Oahu um, because this highway is the only artery that serves many, many communities on the, northwest, uh, the northeastern side of the island. So protecting this roadway is incredibly important. And as you can see, there's nowhere for the road to go. Um, it's directly in between the mountain and the water. And this, this image I actually took just a few weeks ago um, this roadway was recently rebuilt. They have to rebuild it almost every single year because it continues to degrade and fall away into the water. So by um, what, what we're hoping to do is by outplanting uh, crustose coral and algae colonies directly onto the reef crest, we can reduce the wave energy that's able to make it past the reef crest, which then re results in a reduction in wave energy, um, hitting the, the shoreline, hitting the road, and therefore creating more resilient communities um, and protecting the communities that exist um, and rely on this road. So uh, thank you. And if anybody has any questions, I'm happy to answer them.